Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back for another Ross console video. I'm Bayboy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I survive as a solo player on Ross console edition. I'm gonna show you how I survive on the current official servers that are dominated by the clans and the Zergs. They seem to be raiding everything in sight. Uh, maybe they're just bored of the game at this point, uh, running in, in uh, such big groups. And I can understand, I can see that why boredom would set in on these groups or these Zergs. You know, uh, we're certainly lacking uh, content updates to the game. I think everyone can agree on that point with the lack of updates uh, to the game. And. Uh, here we are with still no, no new monuments and content uh, to keep everyone busy and engaged. So I can see why these raids are happening. Uh, I mean, the solo player really don't stand much of a chance on any of these servers. Hopefully uh, our, our custom and private servers are not too far away and it's something we could look forward to uh, as solo players uh, in the near future. But anyway, uh, there's a method that I use kind of get around all this and, and it still allows me to have a lot of fun and enjoy my time uh, during the wipe in Ross Council Edition. So make sure you stick around, I got lots of good tips and tricks here, something that's going to help you guys out as solo players so you can still enjoy this game until we get our, uh, our private and custom servers available to everyone. So the best and one single tip that I can give all you guys as solo players out there is to own multiple bases. You need to uh, secure your loot. I mean, you, you can't uh, risk keeping all your loot in one base, logging off for the night and uh, be getting offline. There's a very good chance you're gonna be raided while you're offline. Very few raids happen online in this game. Um, you need to split your loot up before you log off. You need to take a couple kits, two or three guns, and move it between your bases. In this current wipe you're gonna see in this video, I maintain three bases that are somewhat close together, near outpost, and uh, I maintain those three bases every time before I log off, I split my loot, I don't split it evenly, but I do keep several guns in each base, so I, when I log in, likely I know I'm gonna be raided, so I can just log into my next base, spawn into my bag, and I can go pick up a kit and, uh, and I'm on my way. I'm not gonna end up logging in and rage quitting the server because I lost everything that I worked so hard to get. So for me, I, I don't need two or three boxes of guns to, uh, to enjoy my wipe, you know what I mean? If I log in and my, and my base is gone and I lose everything, well, I'll just spawn into my next base that also has guns and loot and I could do a lot of damage with a couple of guns in a short time. So I can build back up pretty quickly. And like I said, I don't need a bunch of loot to enjoy myself. I can uh, just a couple of guns and I'm good to go. And uh, I got no problem uh, making a day out of it and having a lot of fun that way. So the, the best tip I can give you guys is to claim the land when you can. If you see a TC you can break or, or that is open. Uh, bases that have been decayed. You want to create a lock and you want to place it in a TC right away and claim that land so no one else can build on that land. So that is yours now, and you control these areas. So as you see here, these, these uh, bases right adjacent to me are now, between this base and outpost, I own them all. All four pieces of land, I own all that land. So I don't encounter other players. I'm not competing for the wood. I'm not competing for the, the stone nodes or the metal or the sulfur. I can pretty much go out around all these areas and farm freely without problems. So that's a big benefit of owning multiple uh, blocks of land. You, you kind of don't have to compete for the resources. So it's much easier on the solo player as well. So um, yes, it takes a, a more time and dedication to the game. Certainly do. You do have to grind. And I'm all about the grind. I don't mind. So if you're not down for that, then this may not be the video for you or the method to follow, but uh, I do believe uh, this is the best way currently to survive as a solo. You do need the multiple bases and to split your loot over the bases. That, that is, I think, the, uh, the best way. All the gameplay you're gonna see here takes place on a weekly server. 
I do prefer the weekly servers. I, I got no time for the monthly. I don't see it uh, how it fits into the current uh, current state of the game for uh, Ross Council Edition. The monthlies just don't make any sense for me. I think a weekly and a bi-weekly servers w would be ideal. The longer these servers progress and go on, the more out of reach you're going to become from the larger clans and, and bases. And on top of that, then you're going to deal with the server lag, which we definitely don't need any additional server issues or lag in Rust Console Edition at this time. I mean, that has been a battle for some time, the servers and the lag in the game. So the longer these servers go on for and the bigger these bases get, well, you know, some of these guys like to build stone walls around the full island or they try to build walls around complete monuments. Like this stuff completely bogs down servers and creates a lot of server lag and problems and especially for the older consoles. So I do not see the point in that. You will not see me play on a monthly server. I, I'm a more of a weekly guy. I like to get on and do that grind and then to restart all over again. All right, it's time to get back to the tips. Uh, Right here, guys. Uh, these guys are trying to raid this base. I don't want to kill them. I want this guy to jump out with the loot so then I can try to kill them. So I'm kind of slow playing here, just trying to get them out. But there's quite a few. There's nakeds running after me with spears. And there's a guy with a DB in there, so I can't get too close. And I just got to time me off that first guy I killed, so I kind of don't want to lose that either. But I heard those guys talking about almost being deep on that base and getting it all. So I turned around to go back for a second look. And he will get me pretty quick with that DB, no doubt, if I get too close, so I gotta be careful. So as a solo player, you need to take every advantage you can in Rust. I mean, you need to get up early if you can, you need to play on the lower pop times on the server to do your more high-risk activities, so... You want to get your farming done early in the morning if you can get on to get that done so you can get your base uh, your base essentials and get your base upgraded, that type of stuff. And the same for running monuments. So if you're going to run uh, airfield and launch site you know, as a solo, you don't want to be doing that when the server's pop, popping off with 100 people on. And these weekly servers are certainly popping off every day. So you got to watch out for that. You want to use your times, uh, use it wisely. Pick the times that you're going to go to these high-risk areas. But I just pick the times that I think is best to go there so I don't lose my loot, my uh, access, my red card and my green cards, my fuses, that type of stuff. So uh, just be careful with that. I personally like to uh, roam early in the mornings to check the server out to see what bases have decayed overnight uh what bases have got raided so i'm more in touch with the server and that way i'll be able to clean that loot or pick up anything that's there for the taking so i'll always carry a hammer with me and i'll always carry some extra wood i'll always have a pre-made uh, key lock on on my uh, on my character so i can lock any tc that's available or I can uh, reclaim any bases. At uh, two of the bases you see at uh, me using here in this wipe, two of the four, I, I took them over after they were raided. I went in there, I placed a new TC, and I placed doors on, and then I expanded the base out a little bit further to make it mine. I had, a couple of the bases are a little scuffed, but that don't matter. I, th I think at this point, the more bad it looks, or the, the worse you look as a player, the least chance uh, of you for getting raided. So I wouldn't worry about your bases looking too, uh, too uh, sharp right now. I don't even bother upgrading to Honeycomb anymore. It's just a big waste of time. And when you upgrade your base at this point on these servers, you're basically waving a flag to the clans, to the Zergs saying, come raid me, I've got all the loot. I've got some good loot here, so just come on and raid me. You may as well just stick a flag on top, right? It's pointless to put the honeycomb on your base at this point. And I mean, once it do change and we get our private custom servers, by all means, we'll need to, uh, you know, upgrade your base properly and place the honeycomb. But at this point, you'll see in the, in, on, uh, from these bases that I've used, I didn't bother honeycombing any bases because the clans, they've got lots of boom. Whatever base they decide on raiding, they're coming in, then you're not going to stop them unless you're, you get lucky and you're able to uh, uh, get an online raid and you can kill them. But other than that, split your loot up and hope for the best. That is the best uh, advice right now that I can give you. So during this weekly wipe, 
I was raided twice out of the three bases that I maintained. I was raided on day two, and I was raided again on day three, both at, on separate bases. Now, it didn't affect me because I had backup loot in my uh, third base, and I would just spawn in and go back to work. You know what I mean? Uh, not a big deal. It's a little disappointing when you log in and see all oh, your shit is gone, but uh, it's a good feeling to log back into your second base and to grab a kit and to uh, start progressing again. So uh, that's the method. That's that's the meta right now you need to be uh, following. You see that vertical sensitivity? Uh, it's pretty bad. It's uh, well way too high still. W11 really needs to give us more adjustment on that vertical sensitivity. I suspect it's another. It's at least 30 to 40 percent too high at this point. It's uh, for me. It's not even controllable. It's out of control when I go vertically. You can see it there when I tried to make a play on that guy. These guys were trying to take over this base. Uh, obviously there's a tier two here. Uh, a clan uh, lived here before, but I didn't realize there wasn't a lock on the TC. So I uh, quickly got some wood and uh, smacked the lock on that TC. It, it was so dark I couldn't really see anything. The other guy I downed, he got picked up by his friend and he got away. I just couldn't see him uh, which way he went. Okay, next tip guys, is on researching your items. When you're a solo right now, I would recommend you spin your scrap as quickly as you can on researching your items. Even if it is a tier two item and you only have tier one workbench. This kind of goes against what I said in a previous video, but uh, the scrap is no good in your base if you get raided and lose it all. So if you got a bunch of scrap and you're done for the day, I would recommend to you to go and research those items even if you don't have a tier 2 workbench and that way you'll have the items they can't never take them from you again even if you get raided you can still create those items and craft them so you'll work on your tier 2 workbench the next day that's what I personally did in this wipe and it paid off I had my custom SMG already already researched on day one I was raided in no time and I came back and uh, I was able to build my way up to get that tier two again and uh, to quickly create, uh, to craft those custom SMGs. And without me researching that early on, I would have had to start all over and I would have lost all that scrap and all those uh, guns and items that I did have. So by me doing that, it was certainly the right move. So I wanted to let you guys know that this is something you should consider doing also. Crafting the uh, second tier 2 workbench wasn't uh, very good either. I didn't really want to do that, but uh, at that point I had no choice. So uh, what I've also done is I'll uh, split my workbenches between bases as well. I won't place the second one in the same base. I'll, I'll usually split them up so I can always uh, craft weapons. So finding loot and getting guns as a solo player. Of course you need to be looting, uh, you need to be getting that green card, your blue card and red card. You need to be running the monument sites, of course you need to do that. You need to be doing the sewer branch in the airfield and go for launch also if you're confident to do that. But outside of that, you need to be getting in on the gunfights. You need to be fighting with the clans. Yes, that's what I said, you need to fight with the clans. Now I don't mean to dive right in there into their gunfights, but you need to be lurking. You need to be the snake in the grass. You need to be that guy that third parties. You need to sneak in there toward the end of the gunfights. You don't want to get in too quick because you're going to lose everything. This is the type of thing you see in Rust, where it's big risk, big rewards. You're going to come out of these gunfights, you're not going to win them all, but if you lurk and you come in late enough, you're going to clean up those last couple players because they're already weak from fighting, or there's only one or two players left and they're looting, which is the very best time to strike. So that's when you want to go in there and clean them up, and you will come out with a full inventory of loot and guns and all the good stuff. So that is how you're going to get your best loot in the game, is from PvP and fighting those clans. I was a bit of a pest to this clan down the hill from me and I kept going back and I took multiple kits off those guys throughout the wipe. And uh, also the same thing with airdrops. If you see an airdrop coming 
Uh, I usually go for airdrops quite a bit, but I, you have to be strategic about it or you'll lose everything because you're just the one man and there will likely be multiples, uh, multiple teammates on the other teams you're going to fight. So use the same technique. You want to lurk in there. You, you want to be late to the party. You want to be snake in the grass, slither in there at the very end when they're looting or when the last couple guys are fighting for that loot and get in there and take them out and take out a loot and bail. That's the way you need to be as a solo player in Rust Council. There's also other good benefits to running multiple bases. If you do get online, say, and uh, they do give you a, a fair raid, which is very few and far between, um, at least you'll be able to respawn at your, your near, near bag, your near base, and come from behind with a weapon and maybe take them out. So that, that is an option. That is, that is a technique I like to use. It certainly works well. Uh, being stuck in a base wh where you can't see out or there's no windows or you don't have a top access or roof access, uh, that really sucks when you're getting raided. You, you can't really do much. So being able to spawn on a different bag or on a different base and come and attack those guys from behind is certainly key. Okay, you guys, that's going to clue up this video. I certainly hope that it's been beneficial to you solo players out there. Time stamps for the video important points will be in the description so you can check there so you can fast forward or whatnot, whatever you like. And also links to my other videos are in the description. And by this time guys, you know what, I, what I'm all about. I create Rust console content and that's what I'm going to be focusing on for many years to come. So if you like to see guides, tips and tricks and you're going to see some solo uh, gameplay coming, uh, highlights of the white progression videos. Make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss my next upload. Okay guys, I really appreciate you guys watching and for you guys being here. Take care and we'll see you guys in the next video.